right so in uh, the previous uh, tutorials we have learned about um, the URLs needed uh, for your measure experience and uh, the important bits which we're gonna work around so let's get started so first thing is um, we have to list uh, the actions we have to do so the first action we have to do is create an API and uh, to do that the first step we have to follow is uh, we have to manage um, our API uh, so first of all go to your uh, URL um, which is eval and then whatever the ID you got dot admin dot mesh dot com and then uh, log in into your dashboard um, the general configuration of an API uh, follows the API definition the endpoints definition and the method definition so let's start uh, with that first uh, we have uh, to uh, define API definition so after logging in into your um, dashboard click on this uh, uh, site um, link and then here you will see all the uh, demo API uh, definitions which I have created before but uh, these are uh, more or less just demo so feel free to create as many as possible for you so here you have this option new API definition click on that okay now here you have to name your um, API so I would name it like say for an example um, get product or maybe just um, x y z uh, api all right you can write out the description uh, api version 1.0 and uh, leave the organization uh, blank and then uh, click on this button create so XYZ API is uh, uh, definition is created. After hitting create, you will now enter the API definition page uh, for uh, XYZ API. This is where we will see the endpoint definitions uh, for the API once uh, they have been created. So on the left hand side, you can see all the different options available, which includes API definition endpoints list and uh, the list of all the endpoint definitions created for the API's then there is uh, API definition settings where all, where all API definition settings including the name and descriptions and versions um, is uh, defined then there is a security setting section whether we want to enable OAuth uh, for this API or not and then there is a um, errors sets where we have custom error messages we want to create for this API then there is access control to which groups we want to allow access to view this API and there is a performance acceleration how we want to set up coaching uh, how, how we want to set up caching for this API so this is here now going back on API definition and endpoint I would like to create first resource endpoint so um, just click on the uh, first uh, resource uh, endpoint I'll click it I would uh, name this endpoint as default for now and uh, my public endpoint address is uh, this which will be available for you once you register yourself so I will say a the uh, path should be the 
API name and probably version one. Yeah. Uh, for this first text box, if you see here, um, this value will typically be the set to a domain name that would match your domain, such as um, API dot your company name dot com or service dot your company name dot com, depending upon which domain you um, configure. Uh, for for the purpose of quick, quick start, we're just uh, leaving it like that. The second box is the path used to um, public endpoint addresses identifies the specific endpoint configuration for the specific service. Um, we can assume a wildcard at the end of the path. Uh, and also the path prefix uh, used must be unique across your mastery instance so hence it has to be uh, quite uh, tricky so the third s uh, step is if you move down and you'll see that there is a um, endpoint address um, this endpoint address uh, is uh, basically um the the business work endpoint of your uh, api a cloud or any endpoint which you want to use where this request is going to be forwarded now for this particular instance we have got a demo a endpoint from uh, mashery uh, people just to understand how it works so we're going to use it so if you want to use it then uh, you want to note it down it is this integration.cloud.tipwebs.com and for this particular endpoint you have to activate a https protocol because it works on that protocol only the third the second um, text box it's it's the trailing code so for that, um, Tipco has provided a code which will give us access. Make sure you put a backslash here. Remember, this is different for different organization and different uh, usage. So this is just for demo purpose. That's why we are using it. Uh, you can use anything, whatever you want. Um, so the second text box provides the ability for a URL rewrite from the configured public endpoint address. Given the scenario, our first endpoint is this, and uh, second, uh, uh, and this endpoint will map to this uh, URL. So, as we have defined it, we can click on create. Now we can see that we have our um, endpoint here. Now let's go to the access control part. Here, by default, uh, no one can see this API as uh, you uh, update your definition. You can create custom roles to enable specific developers to see this API. For this quick start, we will assume that uh, we allow everyone to see the API. So we just uh, go click on everyone and it will be populated here and uh, we just go on top and click on save so this is saved now we need to change one element of the default mashery behavior here by default mashery will pass all uh, query parameters um, it receives onto the backend application including the avi key some backend application don't handle unexpected parameters well and maybe by giving an invalid response or message saying it received too many arguments mashery provides fine control over what is sent to the backend application so we have an option to exclude the passing of the api key so let's do that um click on api definition and endpoint uh, list on the left hand side menu you'll see in the list of default which is we created um, click on that 
Now here on the left hand menu you see more settings on the bottom. Click on the more settings and then once you click on the more settings you will see cookies during uh, redirect easy pass through and everything but here you have this option remove API key and signature from endpoint just uh, enable it and then you don't need uh, to worry about the keys passing uh, to your endpoint which is mapped uh, for your API that's it and you click on the save um, this is done now uh, moving forward uh, we need to uh, provide access through a package and a plan so we created our first API but uh, no one has access to the API as of yet you can try calling your API at the point but you will receive an error so should we should we just uh, try okay let's uh, let's try it um, All right, I'm gonna open my um, apps. There it is, and uh, on this one, I'll just put uh, the API as X. I said there should be one, and then I will say send. Cannot be reached. Let me check why it is not synced. Um, okay. We have created a first API. Uh, cannot be reached. Okay, let me try it in the browser. No, nothing. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's let's go to the API package define uh, go back and then API package definer and then here uh, we have to create a new package. And the package name should be XYZ package my first API package and click on create package is created now here is the package and plan list screen now these are uh, different menus so api package and plan the current screen we are on api package setting um, the name and description of the package key properties um, key length and if we require shared secrets uh, notification settings whether and when to send notification when nearing quota limits or or quota throttle limits between uh, both for developers and administrator so 
here create your first API plan click on this one and uh, just put a name maybe he's let's say starter plan uh, basic free plan right click create on the top right now we can see our starter plan here we will now add the details around this plan so click on the name of the plan and then here uh, we will see again some menus so plan content where we can set method level rate limits and response filter plan designer which API are allowed in the plan plan settings the name status and description of the plan um, key properties how key are requested self-service or moderated rate limits throttle and quota limits access control who has visibility to the plan and notification setting right so click on the plan designer now in the plan designer he can see uh, XYZ API version 1.0 which will turn green uh, if we click here and then we need navigate to the next level by click anywhere in the box and uh, this is the default endpoint which is automatically selected So we, you can see there isn't any methods uh, defined here. So we have to define one. So, so far what we have defined will allow any API call that matches uh, the endpoint, which uh, we have uh, called here with the product method. But uh, as is, there is nothing available, it will not call. So um, if I do this, it should work but it's not working because we haven't created the package at the moment so now click save and it's saved now click on the key property and you see um, self-service key provisioning enabled uh, if we were to select disable we would be distinctly only allow an administrator to provision access on behalf of developer versus allowing a developer to get a key through self-service provisioning make sure uh, to set the maximum allowable keys to four and make sure to set number of keys allowed until moderation to one okay then setting this uh, zero means that administrative approval is required before accessing is granted for an application key setting this to one or more means keys are provided through self-service yeah so click on save now click on rate limits and here we want to set the plan limits as follows throttle one quota uh, you can leave it like that or 2500 uh, per day and uh, after that you just uh, click on save now go to access control and click on everyone which is selected here yep and you will see this and click on the save button by default no one can see the packages and plans that are defined custom rules can be created to only enable specific developers to see if specific plans are available for this quick start we will assume that we all we allow everyone to see the plans we have created okay save it and then uh, let's move on to the next step now you have to share your API with developers. So now that we have an API, a package, and a plan, we can register as a developer and sign up for access 
to the API. For now, you can simply use your existing administrator account to register for key. So as I told you before, you the URLs in my second video, you need to go to the portal. So portal wise, um, you have to click on your name and then you just type developer portal. This will open up your developer portal. Sign in if you are not. And uh, once you sign in, uh, click on my account and under my and under uh, keys. Uh, no, manage account. Okay, this it is. Uh, mm, click on the keys. Oh, what is happening? Um, this is applications. Yeah. Now, click on create a new application. Okay. Now, when you create a new application, uh, name it. Uh, as you want so I'll say it's a starter application um, enter a valid URL the URL entered needed to be in a valid format so it doesn't matter if it is a website it isn't accessible yet it just need to be in valid format so we will just say dot tipco.com and uh, if you go on there you have to describe so for now you can ignore that rest of the field uh, have to make sure though that your issue a new key for create user is uh, selected uh, okay Register a new application name of your application. Da, 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 da. Should say Acme package here. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, it, should, it is saying X Y Z package. That's what we needed. Now accept the terms and services and click on register API. Uh, once it's registered, we will have access to the X Y Z API using a new API key that we have registered. So should have also received an email on status of uh, the registration. This is our key. Given that we have not required approval for the first key request, uh, your key should automatically be active. If you require moderation, we would see a status of waiting. Right. So I got an email with all the details here. Now, so the next step is to create uh, the documentation. So let's first see if our API is working or not. Copy this key and Invalid for given email. All right, let's have a look why it is invalid. Um, boom. Okay. Alright, 
so now we got a forbidden and uh, which is a good thing because this is what we want to receive anyways in a row format okay right now what we have to work on is <sighs> figure out why it's not working so this is okay this is okay and this is okay let's uh, let's try the we might have done something wrong but we'll check it again anyways after creating the documentation right so let's uh, go and see how we can create the documentation uh, actually, we can uh, use this API in API console to test it. So, click. This is our app. This is the method. And uh, for a request, mission. Okay. Okay, let's uh, first go and get the documentation up and then we'll see why it's not working. It's good that it's not working. We got to know and then we'll do it. So we go design and then IO docs and then inside this uh, we will see our API here. So click on uh, the API. Once that done, um, we have uh, here see a default IOTOX template that has been created based on API endpoints definition we have created in the earlier section. Now on the top right, we have an import that allows us to import an existing IOI DUX JSON file or WSDL file there, uh, but we don't need that. Um, we will need to make a number of updates to approximately point diadox to the appropriate API uh, and path for each method. Make the following edits in the IODOC station. So the base uh, path uh, we have to change, which is this. So we have to provide uh, this here right and uh, then yep that's done and then uh, under example method uh, we have a path here. We can define it as product. Uh, under the example parameter, uh, under the parameter, there is an example parameter. Uh, create change required to false because we don't really need it in the demo. Uh, and then that this is how it looks like uh, the whole API documentation then create on click on create and it will create the whole documentation view um, yep and uh, if 
you have followed the instruction through this document uh, then see if you manually provide any key information okay let's uh, let's go and try this now uh, API thing it's still showing wrong mm. why it's still showing wrong Mm. Other APIs are working fine. Uh, we might have forgotten something, but this is the process you have to follow to create it. And I'm gonna post something about how I debug it in my next video. So wait for that and I'll update you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.